Good morning dolls and welcome to Little Gretchen's workshop. So today we're making knives. Now these are example of the knives we're going to make. Actually I made those previously a while back so the ones we make today are probably going to look better than these. Okay so let's go ahead and get started. So the way I make my uh, knives I actually use uh, leftover scraps from coffee stirs. Yeah we're making stuff with scraps again. So I, I actually like to use the scraps from the birch wood coffee stir sticks and the square wooden dowels similar to the ones that I use when I made uh, my kitchen cafe curtains. Now if you haven't seen that video for the kitchen curtains definitely check that out in my playlist. So with the, with the square wooden dowels because it's a solid piece I cut a trench down the center. Now it may be good if you go ahead and mark it where you're going to cut it. I just kind of eyeball it. Um, be very careful when you're using the saw blade. Now for my blades I actually use the ass tape, the pla packing plastic. Yeah more trash. And I use the scraps from that as the blade because it's a nice weight and actually looks very very much in scale for a blade for miniature or 12 scale. So I'm going to show you two different techniques to get the same result so you'll know that there's more than one way to do this. So what I do is I paint, I'm going to paint a few of the pieces of plastic with, with just plain black acrylic paint both sides Okay, so just a plain clear plastic, just painting it with just standard black acrylic paint. Now I'm kind of trying to do it in one direction. Uh, yeah, a little Gretchen is just kind of doing it all over, but it's going to be fine. We're going to do it on both sides. And then the other pieces, we're going to use our trusted gesso. Now gesso, um, I use a lot of projects. I like it because actually you could more or less think of gesso like a primer. It gives you a nice surface to paint on and it really helps a lot when you're working with things like plastic because the surface is so smooth it really doesn't give the paint anything to catch on to. So gesso solves that problem for you. And I'm going to do both sides and you have to allow it to dry. Okay. So make sure you give it a nice smooth coat and allow both of the sides to dry. Now while that's drying, let's go ahead and glue these pieces together for our handles. So I match up um, the pieces, the birch wood sticks together, and I'm going to glue them with some Gorilla Wood glue. Now these will be a little bit easier to find the split because it is two pieces glued together. Now it might be a great idea if you leave a portion of it unglued so the trench will already be there. But I glued the whole thing and just recut it. But yeah you can actually leave a portion of it unglued and then you wouldn't have to worry about having to cut the split again. Okay so let's work on this cutting board. So now the cutting board, I just kind of uh, drew uh, a rough shape out of a corner of a piece of basswood. Now that was just a rough cut. I didn't, um, didn't cut it real neat. Yeah, a lot of times me and little Gretchen don't. But I knew what I wanted it to look like. So I got the rough cut out and then I worked on it some more. So I took my blade and began to define uh, the top portion of the cutting board, um, the part I want it to be the handle. So be very careful again when you're using any kind of cutting tool. And I'm just cutting it to define the shape at the top of the cutting board. And I actually, like I said, want that part to look like a handle. So I trimmed it out and I decided I wanted to have like an area where I could put a little loop of thread or rope through it. So I said, oh, okay, let me put a hole in the top and realized that the drill bit I was using was actually just too small so I had to get a different drill bit so the hole would be bigger and I actually um, swapped it out and actually drilled it on both sides just to make sure 
that um, the space was clear for the thread or the cord that I wanted to put through that. Because I would like to be able to hang it on the wall or on a doorknob um, in the kitchen. So that would just make it um, easy and convenient for the dials to get to. So take your time anytime you're using any of your tools. As I mentioned um, in many of my videos, these are all edited videos. So the time it it took me to make these as much more than what the video is. Just take your time. Uh, be patient with yourself as you're learning. Um, sometime um, you may make it and then decide you want to do it, uh, do it differently or do it better. But if you take your time the first time, a lot of times you'll end up with a result that you're pleased with and something you're proud to display in your setting. So I began to shape it with the sanding and I just measured it and checked it for scale and realized it was a little bit more than an inch long, which would have made it in a miniature scale, maybe about 14 or 15 inches long, which works out for me. And here I'm just defining the top a little bit more, being very careful with my knife to define that handle area. And after I got through cutting, it looked like I wanted it. It was starting to look like a cutting board to me. Now I still have quite a bit of sanding to do, but I'm starting to like the general shape. Okay, so now that I've got the general shape in, I'm really going to work it over with the sanding. And you see here I made my own little sanding tool with a piece of sandpaper taped around a wooden dowel. It helps me to do really quick sanding in areas um, to smooth it out really quickly. I'm just cleaning up the little rope area and the handle area. I'm really pleased with the shape of the little cutting board. So now we're really going to get to work on styling it. I forgot to erase that little pencil line, so just want to clean that up really quick. Okay, so the cutting board looks good. Let's check in on those knives. Okay, so the pieces have dried. And they're looking really good. So let's work on the shape of the handle because the shape of the handle is very important with defining like what type of knife you have. So bear with me. There's quite a bit of sanding here. I definitely edited out a lot, but I just wanted you to realize there's going to be quite a bit of tedious sanding in this process. Um, I definitely edited out the sound because I hate the sound of sanding, but I definitely had to work with it a bit. But the birch wood um, handles sanding really well, so you end up with a really nice smooth handle. So after I sanded it to get some of the uh, free edges off, I began to shape it more with my blade. Again, be very careful because these are really close cuts. And um, it's almost like I was whittling uh, the shape of the knife handle with the blade. And I really love this blade because it gives you really teeny weeny, very thin um, cuts, which is great because in miniature, if you cut too much, you can ruin the whole shape of an item. So to me, that makes it really um, a great tool. And I had to continue to sand and shape and more sanding. And after all that sanding, look what we got. So definitely take your time to work on your handles. Don't speed through this. Take your time. So let's go ahead and check in on that cutting board. So I definitely wanted the cutting board to look like it had been used for years and years and years. So I definitely had to rough it up. So I just went wild with the sandpaper and the saw and the blade to put gouges and cuts and nicks in it because I definitely wanted it to be scarred up. And if you look really close, you can see those scars. They're not very defined right now, but after I begin to stain it and add color to it, they'll show up a lot more. But definitely get your cuts and gouges in um, beforehand. So we're definitely putting some time on this cutting board. Now you could actually use a um, natural wood stain uh, to stain your cutting board or regular acrylic paint will work just as well, but you definitely want to use 
thin washes, not a heavy coat of paint. So now, although I said don't use a heavy coat of paint, I did start out with a heavy coat, but I'm gonna wipe it off because I want the color to look deep and saturated. And layer it up and actually using a heavy coat isn't bad but I just want you to uh, be able to get it off I don't want you to ruin it in the first shot um, some of the things that I do I do it because I've kind of tried they're kind of tried and true things that I've done over the years but I don't want you to do something that you can't undo so that's why I tell you to do it in layers so you can build on it and I'm Garden and cutting it up a little bit more and staining it more and wiping it off more again because I want it to look like it's worn down and stained over time. I'm adding years um, of use to it and it's starting to look pretty good. Added my burlap cord. Yeah, that looks great. So let's go ahead and stain those knife handles. So with the knife handles, I actually use a, a combination of cherry wood stain, actual cherry wood stain, and um, brown um, watered down acrylic paint. I kind of went back and forth between the two because I wanted the knives as well to look aged and worn. Yeah, me and little Gretchen had quite a time with this staining. Um, yeah, it got quite messy. Um, when you're using actual wood stain, you probably should cover your surface and protect um, your work area. I actually do my work on a great big slab of tile, so it's easy um, to clean off. Yeah, I bought, bought a huge piece of tile from a home store because I know I'm messy. Okay, so getting back to these uh, knife blades, so I'm allowing the handles to dry. So remember we had put the black on black um, acrylic paint on some of the acetate sheets and we put gesso on some. Now we're going over it with the silver testers. Now, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you want to use silver acrylic, that works just as well. So now our handles are dry enough to handle. Aren't they nice? The color looks really good to me. Looks really good. And we have our um, little slits cut at the top. Now for our rivets and my earlier knives that I showed you in my original picture as the example, I painted the dots on. In this instance, I'm actually going to use um, nail art studs as the rivets on my knives today. So we're going to get those blades in first and I'll show you how I use the nail art um, beads as the rivets. So I began to uh, decide which blades I wanted with which handles and you can shape them as you like. Now I made um, knife uh, shapes based on the types of knives I grew up seeing as a little girl. So you can make whatever style or shape knife blade you like. Um, I wanted a couple like butcher type um, knives. I wanted some fillet knives. I, yeah, I just needed a whole set of butcher type knives. So that's what I did. Now you can use some actual pictures for knife blades to kind of guide you along, but I already kind of had in my mind what type of blades I wanted. Here I am um, recutting those slits in between some of the wood sticks that I had glued together previously. And then I'm shaping um, the plastic for my blades. And you may, after you shape or cut the, the, the plastic, you may have to sand them to get the, the curvature of the blade like you want it. And just be very gentle using a very, very fine grit um, sandpaper for sanding. And just sliding um, the, the blade into the, the trench. Now you definitely want to um, have already dipped the blade into I used Gorilla Super Gel Glue because it secures it really good, but you definitely could use wood glue um, to do the very same thing. Now, now here I am getting ready to start adding the 
nail um, beads as my rivets. I just thought they looked perfect. I had gold and I had silver, but I decided to use the silver ones. And I just used um, uh, one of my nail tools to actually add the dot of glue and then come back and add the nail bead. And I thought it looked really authentic. I thought it looked really good. So as much as I like my original knives, I think these look really, really great. And these are the type of things that you can make, again, from absolute trash. Leftover stir sticks, broken pieces of stir sticks, some packing plastic, just a little imagination and some time. You can make some really great pieces for your project. Now I think these look really, really good. Finish that cutting board. These are going to make a great addition to the rooming house, dollhouse, kitchen, and pantry. Now, if you've enjoyed this video today, I sure would like you to let me know in the comments. Definitely like, share, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when I upload more video here on Little Gretchen's Workshop. Doesn't that cutting board look great? It looks like it's 100 years old. Maybe not a hundred, at least 65. Looking forward to seeing you dolls on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.